Well, the conflict in this episode of the Nick was uh, decidedly smaller, or at least in, or at least smaller in scope, um, in comparison to the riot of last episode. But in a lot of ways, it was more personal, specifically around the character of Doctor Thackeray, because basically, uh, a lot of the characters and the resources, for that matter, were suffering from the events of last episode, the riot. Basically, uh, basically left the hospital with all sorts of property damage. And in addition, the hospital has basically run out of drugs. I mean, they've run out of cocaine, which if, you, uh, if you've been following the show at all, you know that that is a very bad thing. Not just as a uh, valuable drug to use on, uh, on patients, but also Thack, considering his addiction. So there's, there's that little problem that Thack has. And also, uh, the paper that he has been working on with Dr. Edwards, the, uh, the inguinal hernia paper, I believe it was, and his and his presenting that at the uh, Metropolitan Surgical Society uh, that was actually potentially overshadowed by this uh, representative from the Jewish hospital uh, Dr. Zinberg I believe it was and you know his his basically uh, I forget what it was called but it basically allowed you to see inside the patient uh, to figure out where the problem was so you wouldn't have to cut too much and potentially harm the patient during a surgery so yeah, Thackeray, considering his ego and considering how hard he has worked um, to keep the Nick afloat and to maintain a reputation for himself, combined with his uh, uh, cocaine withdrawal, um, this was a very stressful episode for him. Um, and I actually found that kind of interesting from a lot of different perspectives, not the least of which is Clive Owen's performance. Clive Owen was electrifying in this episode. This is probably his best performance in this show to date. The way we see him deal with this, uh, with this really psychological and physical deterioration of Thack combined is, was really fascinating to watch. And I think, and I think Soderbergh and the writers knew that because, because there were constant shots and close-ups of him where we just saw him sweating we just saw him um we we just saw all of the conflict and uh and anguish written plain on his face often while he was doing other things um when he was trying to perform a surgery we didn't focus on the surgery we focused strictly on him um and just real intimate shots like that are are one of the things that characterize this show because a lot of the time this show chooses to focus on things like like let's say you have let's say you have a certain scenario and you would think that the focus would be on this scenario let's just take the surgery you would think the focus will be on the surgery right well instead the focus the sole focus is on dr thackeray and it's just examples like that um are one of the things that i think characterize this show and in addition there were there were uh, other arcs this episode that uh, admittedly were not quite as interesting but i thought were uh, were mostly welcome First of all, first of all, there is uh, the character of Gallinger, who I said before I didn't particularly like. Well, here he is actually starting to gain some sympathy from the audience. Um, we can uh, we can empathize with him in a way that we haven't necessarily been able to before because he's um, he's desperately trying to please his wife, while his wife clearly belongs in the nut house. I mean, I don't want to jump to any conclusions here, but she seems pretty far gone um, after losing the baby. And after he br after he and Sister Harriet bring bring uh, Grace, the baby who was dumped at the Nick, um, after they bring the baby to her in in the hopes of adopting it, she's like, "Oh no, I can't, I I don't want to see another baby die." And and they just nevertheless they decide to try it, and um, and the next scene you, you see her in, she's kind of knitting a sweater, and and Gallinger's like. Like the baby hasn't been changed all day, and and she's like, "Who hasn't? I'm knitting a sweat. I'm knitting a hat for Lillian, who's who's the baby that died." So, yeah, she's pretty far gone. I don't really know what they're gonna do with that. If Gallinger is gonna have the, uh, if Gallinger is going to have the strength of character or the uh, or the will to actually to actually put his wife in a mental institution, or maybe that's too drastic an action for this uh, for this stage. Maybe maybe they'll see some type of therapeutic treatment I don't really know what would be available because I am by no means a medical expert especially not not when it comes to the year 1900 which is when this show is set in addition to that uh, things go from bad to worse because a few episodes back we saw Mary Mallon get detained and quarantined um, and I mentioned right 
right from the beginning, I've been kind of against this idea of bringing Mary Mallon into the show because we have this uh, slightly fictionalized setting of New York, but but um, but bringing Mary Mallon in, I thought that would be kind of a gimmick. And while that and while I don't think that has been the case up to this point, um, the character of Mary Mallon, I'm not going to be too sad to see her go because. Uh, you know, maybe it's just uh, my objective thinking getting in the way of my uh, subjective acceptance of the character. But uh, Mary Mallon, uh, I just, I just could not stand her. I, uh, I didn't necessarily like her character. Um, but from what I've read, it's the way that they're portraying her is actually fairly accurate to how her personality was in real life. She, by her very nature, was very stubborn. She was very, uh, um, she was often in denial of. Of the uh, of her possession of typhoid, and one issue that this ash this episode actually addressed is you know how do we how do we possibly know, I mean how do we know that she that she even has typhoid and and uh, Birdie who is uh, who is up at the stand at this point in the hearing he's he's like oh well this is admittedly the first recorded case of someone passing along the disease without necessarily exhibiting the symptoms. Um, and that ultimately seals the deal for the judge, who, who again, uh, I like how they're showing this distinction um, between different fields. Uh, the judge is uh, overly sympathetic to Malin's case. He lets, he lets her off the hook, uh, despite, despite the majority of medical, medical evidence pointing to the need for the contrary. Um, so she's back on the street. Uh, she's changed her name, and she's uh, going. We all know she's going to continue to spread the typhoid fever. So I don't really know how that will impact the rest of the season or rest of the season. I think there's only two episodes left. Um, I don't know if they're going to save that for next season. I don't know. Maybe this was just kind of an introduction to the uh, to a larger arc involving the typhoid in season two. I'm not really sure. Yeah, it seems like things went from bad to worse in this episode because uh, Dr. Thackeray, after hooking up with Lucy in the previous episode, um, seems to be kind of ignoring her in, in the presence of what he considers to be more pressing business um, and his own stress. And one shot I really liked, it's probably my favorite shot in the entire episode, is actually a POV shot um, from... Uh, from uh, Dr. Christensen, the doctor who committed suicide at the beginning of the series, and it's a POV shot of of him lying dead, and Dr. Thackeray and all of his colleagues come and discover the dead body, and the camera shows Dr. Thackeray, um, he's all shocked and appalled and sad that his friend has committed suicide, His uh, and this this uh, shot happens just after Thackeray goes to the opium den, and uh, and... <laughs> And is injected with a, or inhales a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff to put him out. So, so the fact that he is now seeing that uh, that the show is now drawing parallels between his uh, slow deterioration and Christensen's, I thought was a, a, is actually a really neat way to tie to tie these two characters together, um, and to actually tie this arc in with something that happened at the beginning of the show. I actually thought that was a really clever tie-in. Um, and aside from that, everything everything about the Nick that has been good up to this point is still good. The music, the acting, the pacing, the, the cinematography, the authenticity um, when it comes to history, all of this is still good. And that and actually, that's uh, that actually makes me have a new appreciation for the show, um, the fact that it already has this high standard starting out. Um, because usually season one, I, I think I mentioned this in shows like Gotham and Arrow, um, season one is normally a time for uh, trial and error, for problem solving. See what works for the show, or see what doesn't work for the show, and then season two, you can really hit the ground running. I think it's rare that a show um, has a consistently good quality in season one, like right from the get-go. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't recall these writers ever writing anything before, but... Um, Good job to these uh, to this pair of writers who, as far as I'm, who I think have written the majority of the episodes for this season, um, along with Stephen Katz. And of course, credit has to go to Steven Soderbergh for his direction of all ten episodes, or at least as far as I know. Um, so yeah, this episode of the Nick uh, was was uh, noticeably smaller in scale, but but again, it was more personal, and I think that was uh, the right way to go.